dawn of civilization, man has followed the trail of water and vegetation to where he might subsist. From Central Asia, he moved both east and west, east toward the Pacific Ocean and west up the shores of the Atlantic. He left in his wake the symbols of his culture and his faith, silent witnesses to an inquiring mind. As men learned to cross the oceans, the two civilizations were to meet, to meet and to mingle. One of these historic meeting points was Mexico. speak to you about those great Indian civilizations whom Cortez and his men found when they reached Yucatan on that memorable day of 1519. The Maya people At the University of Arizona, students of Mexican history are prepared in two weeks of intensive study for a month's tour of the significant historic areas of Mexico. Of course, the great Aztec civilization. As this conquest spread... Let us join them in their quest for knowledge that we may better understand our neighbor as she is today. After four centuries of turmoil and strife, Mexico today has an individuality of her own. But the roots are not only widespread, they are also very deep. In the early 16th century, when the Spaniards arrived in Mexico, they found a dense Indian population made up of numerous tribes. Many of them, like the Aztecs, had their own tribal dances and ceremonies. the Toltecs, built great cities, massive temples, palaces, and pyramids. To this day, the Pyramid of the Sun towers high above the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, a monument to the ancient culture of the Toltecs. Rich, diversified, and complex as any in the Eastern Hemisphere. To the south were the tribes of the Zapotec and the Mistecs. They left behind them delicately wrought temples and lacework in stone. Architecture flourished in the pillared palace of Mitla. Alban, imposing pyramids rival their counterparts in Egypt in impressiveness and age. These and the work 
of the Zapotec goldsmiths attest to the achievements of a great civilization. Rising through the forest of the Yucatan Peninsula are the striking architectural monuments of the Maya. Stone carving, fretwork like in its delicacy, adorns the temples of Uxmal, displaying a technical mastery and genuine aesthetic discernment. is the Palace of the Masks, one of the most handsome examples of Pup architecture. East, we find the ruins of Chichen Itza, the Mecca of the Mayan Empire. Here are the pyramid temples with feathered serpent motif, the temple of Kukulkan. the city's edge, there is a well called the Well of Sacrifice, for into it were thrown offerings to the water gods, gold, jade, pottery, and sometimes young maidens. A somber reminder of a cruel past. In 1519 came the momentous clash. Hernando Cortes, at the head of some 500 Spanish soldiers, landed at Yucatan. generation, these Spaniards and others that came after them conquered most of Mexico, and a viceroy ruled the land for the Spanish crown. For 300 years, a Spanish feudal society with all its inherent injustices grew unhampered until the climate was ripe for insurgents. It came in the person of Father Hidalgo, parish priest of the village of Dolores. One September morning in 1810, Father Hidalgo rang his church bells as if for mass and led the Indians to rebellion. 50,000 of his followers swarmed over the hills to capture the granary of Adondiga, massacring any Spaniards that stood in their way. But four months later, Spanish forces defeated the rebel army and Father Hidalgo became the first of the many martyrs of the revolution. Yet the spirit of revolt lived on for eventually the plan of Iguala was published, promising Mexicans freedom and equality and the Roman Catholic religion. It was an uneasy trinity, and the tension between church and state climaxed in the middle of the 19th century with the emergence of Benito Juarez, a full-blooded Zapotec and a true Democrat. Notwithstanding the liberal reforms of Juarez, Prince Maximilian of Habsburg, backed by Mexican monarchists and the royal houses of Europe, was enthroned in Chapultepec Castle. His throne was upheld by French bayonets, and when these were withdrawn, it fell.
Maximilian made a last desperate stand at Queretaro, but his army was routed and he, together with two of his generals, was executed nearby on the Hill of Bells. It took 70 more years of troubles and intrigues and tens of thousands of lives before Mexico regained its ancient equanimity. The great monument at Merida is crowded with figures of those who gave their lives for the great mingling, the blending of cultures and heritages that made Mexico what she is today. Thus, no study of her history can be complete without a direct encounter with the land and its people. For today, Mexico is a modern country, still proudly conscious of her rebellious past. So as we join this group of students on their tour of present-day Mexico, let us see what we can learn. This is Mexico City. Look at it. Maybe we can sense the depth of the cultural roots even in this modern setting. Maybe as we look upon the towering symbols of the 20th century, we shall understand a little more of the foundations upon which they stand. The magnificent University of Mexico City. floating gardens of Xochimilco, the bullfight, fascinating as it is, is but a superficial attraction for tourists. Repite la arrancada y se produce el tercer pase terzo, limpio, extraordinario. Y ahora sí el público explota ya en ovaciones. Se ha parado la gente y tenemos al ranchero Aguilar toreando en la forma. We shall have to move farther afield to see the real Mexico. We shall have to get down to earth to adjust our pace to the surroundings, to wend our way to where we may see her at her best. We 
shall need to feel underfoot the solidity of her soil and stones. Then combining instruction with careful study and our own experiences, we may begin to see Mexico and her history in true perspective and what were until now mere names and dates and points on the map will suddenly come to life. The Mexican's Spanish heritage and his struggle with his soil stand out in bold relief as we cross the Mexican countryside. The colonial past is evident in the town of Tasco. The agrarian past is linked with a farmer's hut in Yucatan, with an aqueduct at Querétaro, built some 200 years ago. Awesome mountains, too high and too rugged for the plow, meager allotments of good bottom land, strangely in contrast with the spacious, fertile lands belonging to the hacienda of some rich Spaniard. All these give ready reasons for the wars of the reform and for the revolution. The aristocratic landlord, secure in the whitewashed walls of his hacienda, waxed rich and fat, while the Mexican farmer, already limited in his means of livelihood, was squeezed into the even smaller and narrower patches of arable land. spread erosion caused by overgrazing and the ancient practice of converting trees into charcoal impoverished the land until it was denuded of natural vegetation and left its people hungry for bread. Today, although agriculture still plays a major part in the country's economy, some farm products are providing the basis for allied industries, such as the manufacture of hemp. Artisans like these stone cutters provide the materials for Mexico's magnificent architecture. Steel mills run at capacity to furnish the sinews of a rapidly expanding economy. military as in industry, Mexico strives to keep in step with a modern world. These are the hallmarks of adult nationhood. Yet behind all this, ancient habits are slow to change. Still the women do their washing in the village pond. Pazzaquaro, fish are still being caught as they have been for ages. established method of working the maguey fiber is being taught to children at an early age. However, formal schooling is mandatory for all the youngsters. Mm -hmm. 
invitada en forma una Mexico's children sing and laugh and play, as children do everywhere. Mexico's young girls are lovely, as they are almost everywhere. But pottery such as this you'll find only in Oaxaca, an ancient center of the craft. and the lacquer work of Urapan is matched by the Chinese alone. This display of copperware reminds us of the heritage of the early Zapotec goldsmiths. In fact, Mexico today abounds in arts and crafts, leather work for use and ornament. Glass blowing, one of the most highly developed and most ancient of crafts. great physical strength, skill, and accuracy. Weaving and spinning are still being done with time-honored tools. It seems almost as if there were no language necessary among the Mexicans, so marvelously do they contrive to convey the wealth of their culture solely through the skill of their hands. Come, let us mingle with the crowd. Today is market day, and there is no better place to get to know the Mexican people. From far away they come by any means of travel, provided it gets them there. The wares are sundry and manifold, fruit of the lands, or work of their hands. They are close to earth still here in Mexico, close to the soil. Not for them the packaged soups of the supermarkets, nor the standardized sizes of department stores. Though modern sanitation is making itself felt in this large covered market, the link with the farmer is still strong. 
unknowingly it represents a link with the past. One link, that is. For there is another one much stronger than this. Religion. Mexicans are a religious people. The Christian priests who came with the Spanish conquerors destroyed many of the physical monuments of the numerous native religions and built churches and cathedrals in their stead. But in this dramatic encounter of Roman Catholicism with pagan rites, neither of the two completely lost its identity. Each made concessions to the other. Symbolic of this grafting of one faith upon the other is the great cathedral in Mexico City, one of the largest in the world. It was built on the site of an Aztec temple and took more than 200 years to complete. Religious processions and pilgrimages are daily occurrences in Mexico. Here is one near the most famous and most significant of religious shrines, that of the Virgin of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico. Pilgrims from all over the country visit this holy place and many approach the shrine on their knees, a symbol of reverence and humility. La Virgencita, the Little Virgin, resides in the Basilica of Zapopan. Each year, for almost four months, she visits other churches in Guadalajara and then thousands participate in the Fiesta of Zapopan as the Little Virgin returns to her basilica in a splendid procession. followed, needless to say, by a riotous fiesta. For fiestas are Mexico. They are an intoxicating mixture of well-planned spectacle, traditional courting, and spontaneous merriment. The music and the dancing are typically Spanish, but then they are typically Indian, too. In short, they are Mexican.
These, then, are the elements. First, a sun-baked rocky land, then a proud and flinty ancestry, and finally, a militant, magnificent religion. Time, four long and turbulent centuries, has kneaded these into a whole, a form new and unique. Now at last, it seems, Mexico has found stability and respite from internal strife. But back to the fiesta, for the best is yet to come. What are you looking at? Little Mexican, what do you see? Say, I see a future bright with promise, little Mexican, and a priceless heritage to keep. Mm -hmm. 